مورنينج اقرا ايه الاول اسيبها مع حضراتكم تفكروا فيها لغايه باقي المؤتمر I'm going to read a verse first and I'm going to let you think about it for the rest of the conference. اعتبروها ان الايه دي هي ايه المؤتمر اللي المفروض الكتاب والرب خلانا ندور حواليه. Think of this one as the, 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 the verse for the whole conference which the Lord has kind of directed our hearts to uh, uh, sort of, you know, uh, center this and everything else goes around. Ezra 7, verse 23. بيقول كل ما أمر به إله السماء فليعمل باجتهاد لبيت إله السماء هعيدها تاني وهيترجمها جوزيف كل ما أمر به إله السماء فليعمل باجتهاد لبيت إله السماء Whatever the God of heaven has prescribed, let it be done with diligence for the temple of the God of heaven. Amen. I'll continue with We're going to read from uh, Proverbs chapter 6. من عدد 6. Verse 6. اذهب إلى النملة أيها الكسلان. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, nor overseer, or ruler. Yet it stores its provisions in the summer. And gathers its food at harvest. إلى متى تنام أيها الكسلان؟ How long will you lie there, you sluggard? متى تنهض من نومك؟ When will you get up from your sleep? قليل نوم. A little sleep. بعد قليل نعاس. A little slumber. وطي اليدين قليلا. A little folding of the hands to rest. فيأتي فقرك كساع. And poverty will come on you like a bandit. وعوزك and scarcity like an armed man. Tonight I'm going to continue with you and today I'm going to speak about only one idea. Uh, the dangers of, uh, of not making the effort. Yesterday we spoke about uh, the importance of effort. Uh, I'm going to remind us of a couple of the things that we talked about yesterday. First is, why is it important for us to make an effort? Because our life is short. And if we forget the fact that our life is short, then we're going to lose it. One person did not think or did not remember that his life was very short and most of it was lost. He was diligent in life and business matters, but he was not diligent in God's things. When he stood before Pharaoh, he said, how long is your life? He says, uh, it's short and uh, um, uh, useless. How little Jacob uh, spent or made effort in God's work. He thought it was very long. So he wasted in many things and only little of it was left for God's things. We remember that our life is in a war. And if we forget the fact that we are in a war, we can also get lost. There was one that forgot that he was in a war. He was not diligent in the day of war. He went to rest. He went on the top of the hill, on top of the, the roof. Daud 
Uh, you know, what a, he was a, a great man of God, but that great man of God had his greatest fall because one day he forgot that he was in a war. And, but also we remember, we said that we have some very strong enemies. They have no mercy on us. If we're not diligent in the war against them, we can also be lost. Is there stronger than Samson? Samson was lost. Because he was not diligent in front of his enemies. He left the flesh to do whatever it wanted. He did not strive against his desires and his, the, the things that he wanted. The, that strong giant was lost. And, but he's, he's not an arrest. Let us not forget, beloved, that we are here to work, not to rest. Work is here on the earth, rest is up there in heaven. One, although he walked half of the distance, he, he went about 500 miles. And he had another half of the way to go. But he wanted to rest. But he rested. Tara, uh, Abraham's father. Every time I sit before this story, I say the father of Abraham himself gets lost. I, I'm just imagining that when they got to Haran, he said, Dad, come on, let's go. Only a short distance remains. He said, son, no, I'm tired. I'm just staying right here. He wanted to rest there. We must be diligent. So I'm going to say some words this morning about the dangers of not being diligent. Is there a danger if we don't make an effort? No, there's many dangers, not just one. But the worst one of the dangers of us not making, being diligent is that the believer will remain without growth. He's going to remain a child. A child in his thinking. A child in the way he speaks. A child in his faith. A child in his works. Whenever you look at him, whenever you see him, you see he's a child. Have you ever paid attention? Beloved, that is on a personal level and also on the level of the whole assembly. The believer, if he's not diligent, he's going to remain a child. And also an assembly that is not diligent will remain as a child. A child needs to be carried. A child always makes noise. A child always doubts. And a child also has many uh, uh, excuses not to work. Can you find that on the level of the whole assembly? That's what I want to talk about this morning. How can the whole assembly be like men, not like children? There is a church in the, in the Bible in the New Testament. The, the, the Lord had blessed that church with so many blessings. The Lord had so much grace on that church. 
It's one of the biggest churches in the whole world, uh, uh, as, as far as I know, that has received so much from the Lord. The first thing is he sent them Paul. The first thing he just sent them Paul. What a wonderful thing. What, do you, what can you say about Paul the, uh, uh, the, the preacher? The one who evangelized with all of his uh, with all of his favor. Also, what do you say about Paul the teacher who after he evangelized them, taught them? And also Paul the pastor or the uh, the shepherd who after he taught them, he shepherded them and he kept them for a long time. You know, Paul in all of his ministry, his ministry was always complete. And when he went to Corinth, he went for one year and six months to serve them. How many days is that? Paul was working with a church for a year and a half. What, what can come from that? <laughs> so when he's teaching them for a year and a half, and when he's sitting with them for a year and a half. And he visits from one house to another. And he solves this person's problems and he cries with that person. How effective is Paul's ministry for in those people that he served for a year and a half? Uh, the Lord loved that church so he did something else also. Paul left. And another one went to them, his name is Apollos. And that one is also a giant. He was very, uh, very well spoken. And he knew the word very well. He was an expert in the way of the Lord. And he was uh, 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 passionate in the, in the spirit. That's the one that went to them. After Paul. One that's a, uh, an expert. Uh, well spoken. Uh, uh, capable. And also passionate. What can be done with this? Work with them. The Lord loves that church. Even more than this. So also the Lord gave them many, many gifts. Think about Corinth. What is one gift that they did not receive? What is one thing that they were missing? And, and the, the, from the first of the from the first lines of the epistle, he says, "You are not lacking in any gift." From God's grace and His love for them, He gave them many gifts. Uh, teachers, there, there they had. Evangelists, they had. Uh, Shepherds and pastors they had. Uh, ones that spoke in different languages they had. The ones that translated they were there. The Lord wanted them to be complete so he gave them all of these gifts. And even more than this. They weren't only three or four brothers. Not even ten brothers. They were hundreds. Which means that God blessed them with a huge number. Look at them. Later, there was none of them found. All of, the, um, all of their gifts they had. And you know, in ministry, the Lord did not take away from them Paul and Apollos. More. 
عشان يبقوا رجاله ويكبروا لسه عايزين تاني ها يوداهم لربنا حاجه تاني. For them to be men and to grow, you think that they need more than this? Yes. العلم والمعرفه. He gave them knowledge. فتح عليهم ربنا بالعلم والمعرفه. The Lord opened their minds so they can understand. استخدموا في كل علم وكل معرفه. So that they were rich in all knowledge and all understanding. فتح لهم ربنا كتب. The Lord opened the books to them. ولما رب نفتح على حد من يقفل. And when the Lord opens the door, who can close it? يعني غالبا أيامهم كانت أيام طفرة زي الأيام دي. So that I believe that their days were bad days like these days. سنيات وكسدات وكتب. They didn't have CDs, books, and and tapes like we have now. إلا عايزين ولا إيه. Whatever they found, whatever we have, when we need, we find. كنيسة ربنا ما حرمهاش بن خدام عبنا. That church, that nobody, I mean, the Lord they didn't stop giving it so many good preachers. ادوهم وقت كافي في الخدمة ما فيش بعد. They had so much. They had so much time that the Lord has blessed them with so much ministry. مواهب ما فيش بعد كده. Gifts. Never, you know, not never more than that. معرفة وعلم ما فيش بعد كده. Knowledge and understanding. أعداد بالعدد بالمئات ما فيش بعد كده. Hundreds and hundreds of them, hundreds of them were there. بره حد قال لي ما تقولش تاني أنت صحيح. مش أقول أنت صحيح. مش أقول. Or he's not going to say he's not going to say if you're awake or not. أقولوني كنيسة زي كده ربنا منتظر إيه منهم يعني. So I ask you the question. A church like this, what is the Lord waiting for from them? يطلعوا. What should they be like? اللي يطلع من تحت خدمة بول السنة ونص ده يطلع. The one who's a child of Paul after a year and a half. What should he be? What should he be like? اللي يقعد قدام واحد مقتدر وحار وبالروح ويقعد يعلم في فترة طويلة وفصيح وطريق يطلع. One like Apollos when he teaches someone for a year and a half who's you know such a strong person in the word. What should this person be like? ولما ربنا يكرم الكنيسة يبقى في شيوخ ومعلمين ورعاة ويشتغلوا. And when the Lord has blessed this church with teachers and evangelists and 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 shepherds, what should they be like? ولما بعد يوم علم وطفرة وكل حاجة متاحة. And when they have a, a, a knowledge and you know even riches, what and everything is available for them. يا ترى ربنا كان عايز إيه؟ What did the Lord want from them? يا ترى بعد السنين الطويلة اللي خدمها بولس وبعد ما مشى بولس وبعد ما مشى أبولس. After all of the years that they served, or after Paul left and Apollos left, كان المفروض يوصلوا. What level should they have reached? عايزين الصراحة. Do you want the truth? بأمانة كنت أتخيل إن كورنثوس تبى حاجة يونيك. I, I, you know, I imagine that Corinth, Corinth would have been a very unique place. حاجة ما حصلتش something that is to be written about in history كنيسة ناضية a church that's on fire كنيسة قدوة للكنائس a church that is an example for all the other churches around it كنيسة دول يتعلموا منهم all of the other churches should learn from those ones مش كده برضه isn't that the way it should be بس تعرف امتى كان عملوا كده do you know when they've done that لو اجتهد. Oh, they would have done that if they were diligent. آه لو اجتهدت الكنيسة. Only if the church was diligent. كان زمانهم طلعت كنيسة ما حصلتش. You know, they would have been a church that would have been written about and nothing like it in history. لكن ما اجتهدوش. But they weren't diligent. ولما ما اجتهدوش ظلوا أطفال. And because they weren't diligent, they remained children. بعد سنين بقوا أطفال وبعد لهم بولس رسالة. After years they remain as children and Paul had to send them an epistle. ممكن تفتح الكتاب تقرأ العدد ده أنا عارف إنه كلنا حافظين الكلام ده ويمكن سمعناه كمان. Maybe we've heard this. كرونسوس الأولى بص كده كرونسوس الأولى رسالة الأولى من أصحاح ثلاثة يقول لهم العدد ده. First Corinthians chapter three he reads this to him. He tells him this. من أول عدد وأنا أيها الإخوة لم أستطع أن أكلمكم كروح. Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual. بل كجسدي. But as worldly. 
كأطفال في المسيح. Mere infants in Christ. كأطفال في المسيح. Mere infants. المصيبة إنهم لم يجتهدوا وظلوا أطفال رغم كل ما حصل. The, the problem was is that they did not they were not diligent and remained infants although they received such gifts. I want to ask a question. What did they benefit from all of those preachers that came to visit them? You know what the children did? Some said we belong to Paul. Some said we belong to Apollos. Yes, another one said that they, we belong to Cephas. <laughs> and another, a fourth faction said, we don't belong to Paul, Apollos, or, or Cephas. <laughs> we belong to the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Understand that <laughs> Is this what you gained from all of those preachers and the ministry? So what did they benefit from all these gifts? They gave everybody else a headache. <laughs> if, you know, you know the kid that has a little, you know, noise maker and he, 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 a whistle, and then he just making everybody annoyed. They annoyed the people and the brethren. Did the Lord give you these gifts so you can annoy people with them? What can you say? They're infants. So what did they learn or what did they benefit from all of the knowledge and the understanding? They were uh, haughty and they were stuck up and they thought that they were, you know, that they were better than everybody else. So what did they benefit when God opened the doors and there were so many of them? You know, what did they benefit from, from being so many? You know what they did? They started to uh, uh, be jealous of each other and envious. They were jealous of each other. They were, uh, you know, uh, complaining from each other. They separated from each other. Beloved, how dangerous it is for us to not be diligent in the church of God. Uh, the only church that the Apostle Paul wrote to while he was upset and suffering in his heart. Because he wanted to see those ones that he served and he was so and he spent so much time with them. The ones that God had blessed and gave to. He wanted to see them grow. But he found them infants. What's that? It's spiritual infancy. Not being diligent. Made them children. May the Lord give us grace, beloved. You're going to be upset if I tell you what's on my heart? I'm very happy with Annabella's. I'm very happy with But we, are, we were supposed to be much better than this. I'm going to say one thing and you can think about the rest. Because 
Beloved, you enjoy uh, many more of the service and the ministry of the Lord's people, even more than the people in Egypt. You know, beloved, there are some meetings in Egypt that nobody even visits even once a year. You know, if, 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 although the Lord, if the Lord is blessing you and He keeps bringing people to you and bringing people to you, what does the Lord want from you? May the Lord give us grace because He wants more from us. He's Amen. expecting more from us. Amen. هو هيكون الحال وصل انه بنتكلم على بعض ما انا مش عايز افتح صدقني اللي في قلبي كتب صدقني ناس كده في قلبي I hope that we're not to the point where we're you know uh, gossiping about one another I can't even say what's on my heart رب الدين انا يا حبايبي رب الدين انا May the Lord give us grace, beloved. The dangers of not being diligent and the blessings of the diligence. Let's look at some of the verses. The dangers of laziness and the blessings of diligence. أمثال ستة Proverbs six. يقول له اذهب إلى النملة أيها الكسلان. Verse six. Go to the ant, you slugger. تأمل طرقها. Then consider its ways. كن حكيما. Be wise. أول حاجة في النملة لا ليها قائد ولا عريف ولا متصل. The first thing that we know about ants is it has no commander, no overseer, or no ruler. يعني فيش حد يزق النملة إنها تكتئب. So nobody's pushing the ant to to be diligent. ما فيش حد واقف لها بالعصايه يقول لها اشتغلي. Nobody is standing with a stick saying work. هي نفسها تحب تكتب. The ant itself wants and likes to be diligent. حاجه في طبيعتها البايه. It's in its nature. ما حدش بيقول له قوم. Nobody's telling him to go. ما حدش بيقول له صلي. Nobody's telling him to pray. ما حدش بيقول له روح زور. Nobody's telling him to go visit. هو بيعمل كده واحده. He does he that, that all that stuff on his own. Yeah, I like that. Oh, how wonderful that uh, all of that diligence. <laughs> the ant, nobody tells it to do, but it's working. <laughs> but he tells you something else about it. <laughs> it stores its provisions in summer. <laughs> and gathered its food at harvest. Something good about the end is that it, it makes provisions for the future. And that's why it's, it's diligent. She knows that it's summertime now. There is time for harvesting. And there is a winter time that's coming where it can't go out and gather food. <laughs> so in this in the in the summertime it's uh, working very hard in the, in the harvest time it's working very hard because she knows what's coming because now is the time of harvest there is coming a time where there is no harvest it's gonna die from uh, uh, starvation so it's collected you know, I'm gonna, I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. We are going to stand before the seat of Christ. There's a time when we're going to shine in glory. The Lord, there is a time when we're going to receive our inheritance. That's in the future. That's in the future. But not everybody is going to be the same. Not everyone is going to have the same uh, uh, kingdoms. The one that's diligent, he's going to say, here, take five cities. Because you are diligent. 
مش كله يلمع زي بعضه كله يروح السماء Everybody's going to go to heaven. بس مين اللي هيلمع أكتر؟ But who's going to shine brighter? عصر لما تكلم عن المجد قال لك أصناف وأشكال. Because when he spoke about glory, there is different types. في ليش؟ ليش؟ ها؟ ليش؟ Okay. في في أبواب في أبواب مختلفة. There is many different shades of brightness. على أي توقف هذه الأمور يا أحمد؟ And what is what is uh, the, the, the differentiating factor in all these things? It's the diligence here on earth. Diligence will make the difference in the day of death and the, the day when we are recognized with the believers. That's what makes the end in the day of harvest to be diligent. لا خد حاجة تالتة في النمنة Look at something else يقول لك تجمع في الحصاد أكلها And gather its food at harvest يعني تجمع يعني what is it what does it mean to gather تطلع حد فيكم شاف نمنة Anybody here have seen seen an ant حد فيكم شاف نمنة نايمة أنا بتكلم جد سبب Has anybody ever seen a a sleeping ant I'm seriously asking the question. Have you ever seen a sleeping ant? يعني منين ما شفتها إيه تمشي؟ Every time you've seen an ant, you've seen it walking, right? عمرك شفتها معس واحدة كده جنب و. You ever seen it? You ever seen it? You know, taking a corner and just taking a nap? No, it's always going. وحاجة غريبة أوي إنها بتشيل حاجة صغيرة أوي. And something very strange is that the ant is carrying something very small. عارف مرة حبيت أشوف فرحت حضرت يمكن حاجة لا تذكر من السكر كده 15 20 حباة. You know, I, one time I wanted to see, and so I just put like maybe just a little bit of sugar, like 15, you know, 15 kernels of sugar. هو يا فندم وشفت المنظر ده صدقني. And he said, I've seen this with my own eyes. And it's going back and forth to carry one thing of sugar. Another time, so you can take the next one. How, look at all the patience. And one after another after another, it keeps gathering its food. It's patient. And, and it's diligent. You know, look before the, you know, if, if you sat and read something you didn't understand, read it again. You'll understand it. Uh, if you pray today and, and you're bored or you don't, you know, you don't feel like you're praying, it's okay. Sit again tomorrow and you'll feel better. And it's going to be better. Father. Have patience. Hold it down. The next one. Or the fourth one. مرة ليش تنام لعندي في البيت؟ One time I found some ants in my house. وكنا رشين البيت. And we had already sprayed the house. وتجي من هنا. Where is this coming from? فتحت الباب لأنه مش من البيت جاي من بار. It I opened the door because it's not coming from the inside of the house. It's coming from the outside. جاي يمكن من 30 متر بره من الجنينة وماشي ماشي 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 لغاية لما دخل. No, he was like 30 meters away. He's coming from the the yard all the way all the way until it got inside. كل ده عشان في الآخر كل واحدة تأخذ حاجة صغيرة بتجمع. You know, all of that walking so that it can take some little thing like this, and it's it's gathering. يا لتحمل المشاق. How wonderful it is to to just. Uh, be able to withstand all of this trouble. That's why God said, look at the ant. Is there any more than that of enduring, you know, troubles? And... Is there any more wisdom than this? It, it, it makes uh, provisions for the future for tomorrow. Uh, how, is there any more uh, patience than this? So then look. يقول لك إلى متى تنام أيها الكسلان؟ 
He says, how long will you lie there? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep. A little slumber. A little folding of the hands to rest. Uh, Three times. Little. 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 تعرف في الآخر and you know what's at the end of this and poverty will come on you like a bandit and scarcity like an armed man you're going to compromise on this and this and this and you say oh that's just a little thing oh this is okay and you're going to live a very poor spiritual life. You know, you who are, you know, think it's not as, as important to go to the meeting. You know, if you consider not sitting before the Lord as just a little thing. And if you consider that your prayers uh, uh, are not that important, and if you don't want to put down your shoulder and work, and you consider that something very small, and your poverty will come on you like a bandit and scarcity like an army. Look at chapter 10. There is one verse in chapter 10. In verse 4. Lazy hands. Lazy hands make a man poor. But diligent hands bring wealth. من يجمع في الصيف فهو ابن عاقل. He who gathers crops in summer is a wise son. ومن ينام في الحصاد فهو ابن مؤذن. But he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. يد رخوة يعني يد رخوة. What is a lazy hand? ما فيش حاسة. There's no there's no discipline. ما فيش قرار. There's no decision. فيش أي نسخة. There's no passion. It's just weaker, you know. Uh, he woke up in the morning and he's on vacation. <coughs> Work. <laughs> Maybe not today because I'm not in the mood. Not <laughs> mood. Forget your mood, man. <laughs> I have a headache. Take an aspirin and work. My whole body hurts. Okay, stay. Beloved, uh, Christianity, this is not going to work for that. We need diligence in our raw and our walk. You're gonna live lazy. You're gonna be. You're gonna be poor. Uh, Sometimes, a long time ago, the devil did this with me, but I understood it. You know, I, 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 you know, I preached what I lived. You know, he said to me, you have a headache today, and you don't need to work today. And I have, you know, sinusitis, and so maybe that, that's true that today. And the whole day was lost. The next day, he says, your neck is hurting. Have, have a heart, have a mercy on yourself today. And you're going to sit and pray and read. And wait for another day. And the day was lost. The third day. 
Lisa hai uli bisha otulu ma fish in the heart. He was just about to tell me, uh, and he said, not today. Al-Hammam shower. I went and took a shower. Wa'ala niskafi ala tool. I got a coffee. Wa'al kitab wa'al salah wa shtabil. And you go to the word and pray and work. Are you going to keep stealing my days? Ya hamayim khudu, khudu balkum nalli bi'amilu ma'aku iblis. Pay attention to what the devil is doing to you. He steals your day without you even noticing. He's lying to you, telling you today, tomorrow, and the day after. He's lying to you. Lazy hands make a man poor. But the hands of the diligent. Bring wealth or You know, think about it this way. The one who is diligent is not the only one that becomes rich. When he, after he becomes rich, he, be, he makes others wealthy. The diligent makes our people around him wealthy. Should I uh, prove it to you from the Word of God? She went outside of her house uh, to bring some water. Rebecca, remember Rebecca, went to get water. Uh, and the man met her. So she brought him to the house. Her brother opened the door, found what on her hand? He said, you went, we sent you out to get water, we gave you the gold. She became wealthy. He says, wait. There's ten camels, man, here you go. She made a laban. A laban that You know, laban when he saw the ten camels. Malianin, ba? Malianin, fulda. Yeah, yeah. They, they they had all kinds of goodies on them, like uh, silver and gold and food. أول ما قال العبد قال له ديني رفقة نمشي. When, uh, when uh, you know, uh, Abraham's servant said, give me Re Rebecca and we can leave. Laban <laughs> said, can you stay with us for 10 days? You know why? <laughs> Because every day, the, you know, the man was given, you know, emptying out one of the camels and given to them. <laughs> and, you know, I'm sure he was looking at his daughter and says, all of these wonderful things came from you. And he's looking at his daughter. <laughs> Don't you want to be diligent so that you can be wealthy and make everyone around you wealthy? I may be a blessing to my brother or my sister. We be a blessing to each other. We work together and we have to we'll be diligent. The same thing he did with Ruth. She went out to pick out a little bit of the harvest. After a little while, she brought Boaz and all of his uh, 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 possessions. Boaz got me. Who did Boaz bring? Me. Who? Obed. Did he bring me? Obed got me. Obed. And Obed brought Jesse. Oh, yes, I get me. And who did Jesse bring? Halal te karaus, get el gan. Halal te karaus. Then she brought David. Iktehdu ya habay. Diligence. Iktehdu fi gan. Diligence brings wealth. 
We become wealthy and make others around us wealthy. Do you think it's not important to sit in front of the Word of God, beloved, that it's a blessing beyond any other blessing? Because we never experienced when, when we go and, and, and visit a family that's lost or that's you know not believers or they're suffering and see how wonderful it is that whole family changes. If you know what if we do this all the time? تعرف لما تلاقي بتصلي لأجل أسرة وتروح تلاقي إن الأسرة اللي بتصلي لها دي ربنا فك الأزمة بتاعتها. You know that when you're praying for a family or for someone and you go to visit them afterwards and you see that the Lord has taken care of the problem that they were facing. لا أنكر إن الاجتهاد في مشقة. I, I do not deny that a diligence it does not come with troubles. But there is no pleasure like the pleasure we get from diligence in the things of God. Look at chapter 12. 24. يد المجتهد تسود المجتهدين تسود diligent hands will rule أما الرخوة فتكون تحت الجزية but laziness ends in slavery عدم الاجتهاد حيوصلنا كأننا عبيد مستعبدين يا حبايب beloved non diligence or when we're not diligent they make us like slaves enslaved by the devil وصاحب الاجتهاد يد تسود but the diligent, his hand rules. His hand is lifted up and he's standing and he's steadfast. Verse 27 says something very nice. The lazy man does not roast his game. I want you to memorize this. But the but the diligent man prizes his possession. <laughs> what does it mean to have uh, uh, the, um, the possession of the righteous? Well, you know, the, the, uh, the riches of, uh, of the man who, who is diligent is not gold or silver or even position. It's diligence. You know, do you think maybe that the diligence is the key for the blessings from God? Uh, that the possession of the man is diligent. عدد أربعة من أصحاح تلات أنتوا تعبتوا ولا كمل؟ كمل؟ عدد أربعة من أصحاح تلاتاشر يقول آية حلوة. Chapter 13 and verse 4 says something very wonderful. نفس الكسلان تشتهي. The sluggard craves. بس ولا شيء له. And gets nothing. تقدم بق. يشتهي. بس مش قادر يمسك. Are you paying attention? He craves, he wants, but can't get anything. He wants, but can't get. Why? Because he's lazy. There's no diligence, so he can't get. He's a baby. واحد في في الاجتماع دي حاجات أنا عصا شفتها عصا واحد في الاجتماع يجي خادم. يقدم خدمة في رسالة العمراني. You know, uh, uh, one time uh, somebody would be sitting in a meeting and there's a, a, a you know a preacher that comes and he speaks about the book of Hebrews. يعجب برسالة العمراني لل للأخ اللي بيسمع. And he falls in love with the book of Hebrews. The person who's listening. إيه ده؟ ده أنا ما كنت فاكر رسالة حلوة. I didn't know that it was such a wonderful epistle. لا لا هبتدي أدرس. I'm gonna start studying it. هبتدي. So then start. يا سلام نفس نفس 
Oh, yeah. I'd love to. I wish. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's going to be great when I study it. It's a wonderful thing. And he stays like this for three months. <laughs> Why don't you start? But I'm, he's lazy. He desires, but he can't. Because he's lazy. تروح تلاقي بعد أربع خمس سنين في اللي هو فيه. You go four or five years later and he's still on the same position that he's in. نفسه. Uh, he wishes. بس ما عمل. But he can't. يقول لك بقى الآية بص المجتهد بقى ما هو في فرق. But look at the rest of the verse. Look at the difference between the lazy and the diligent. There's a difference. The sluggard craves and gets nothing. But the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. Fully satisfied. Chapter 15. Beautiful verse. Uh, verse 19. The way of the slugger is blocked with thorns. But the up path of the upright is a highway. What, the, what does it mean the way of the slugger is blocked with thorns? Which, which means that, you know, if that's the lazy person, whenever you come close to him, he comes or he asks him for something, he, you know, brings up so many uh, uh, thorns or difficulties. I don't know why I'm, I'm saying all these things about uh, going to the meeting and being in attendance of the meeting. One of the wonderful elders will go to the brother and say, uh, Beloved, we haven't seen you for such a long time. We miss you. And as right when he says that, all of the thorns start to come out. My circumstances. My work. My kids. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, my, huh? And so, and everything. And many, many, many excuses. I know that life is difficult. But let's be diligent. But if we're diligent and we put together a list of all of our priorities, we're going to find the time to do all of this. But the path of the upright is a highway. Which means it's a highway is something easy and it's open, it's wide. You know, the diligent, uh, maybe the Lord is putting a lot of stuff on him and he's tired. He has a, a difficulty that he's going through. Or a sister that's suffering from something. But because they're diligent, they're working and working in the way and the things of the Lord. The lazy man looks for all the excuses, but the diligent, although he is stressed and he's pressured, but he's working. Chapter A sluggard does not plow in season. So at harvest. So at harvest time he looks but finds <laughs> The sluggard does not plow in season. So at harvest time he looks but finds nothing. The day of harvest, I see this in the villages in Egypt. Everybody's going out of their houses and they're all harvesting. All of the silos are going to be filled. And 
You never know the, the, the joy of the, uh, the, the farmer until the day of harvest. And they're coming back with lots of harvest. How wonderful that beloved believer that is working and diligent. The one that's working and diligent always. بس في يوم الحصاد والناس راجعة وعنديها وتلاقي الكسلان. But in the day of harvest and everybody's got a lot of stuff and you see the lazy person. وعنده حق لك ممكن يزرع ويشتغل. He has a field that he could have harvested it and worked it. بيخبط على البيوت. He's knocking on the doors. ممكن كسرة خبز أعمله مع أبوه. Can you give me a little piece of bread? يا إلهي. My goodness. يا إلهي على عدم الاجتهاد يوصل المؤمن إنه يبقى ناشف مش لاقي حتى كسرة الخبز. You know, laziness makes the believer so dry that he can't even find a, a morsel of bread. جعان روحيا. He's hungry spiritually. مش لاقي في يوم الحصاد. He can't find anything in the day of harvest. عارف ليه مش لاقي يوم الحصاد؟ Why do you think he can't find anything in the day of harvest? ليه؟ because he didn't actually plant, he didn't do what he was he didn't work, so he can't find anything. In verse 24, there's something very difficult. Twenty-four. The sluggard buries his hand in the dish. الأكل قدام the foods in front of him أنا خلصت بقي بس صح واحد بس عاوز صحين صح we're almost done almost done الأكل قدام the food is right in front of him الكتاب the word of God الطعام the food حضرته كسلان يحط إيده في الأكل he he puts his hand in the food ممكن حد يجيبها لي can somebody bring it to me? It's difficult for him to put his hand in his mouth to feed himself. You understand how much laziness can do to a person? عدد تسعة وعشرين من أصحاح اثنين وعشرين آية حلوة كمان. verse twenty chapter twenty two and verse twenty nine a wonderful verse. أرأيت رجلا مكتهدا في عمله. you see a man diligent in his work. لا يصل إلى فين هذا؟ how high or how far will this person go? أمام الملوك يقف لا أمام الرعاع. he will serve before kings he will not serve before obscure men. The diligent goes and stands quickly before the, the kings. And I'm going to add something. I know that this is the word of God. Beloved, I say that the, the diligent stands even before God, not just before the kings. Joseph, the one who was diligent, stood in front of Pharaoh. دانيال المجتهد وقف قدام الامبراطور. دانيال ذا ديليجنت ستود بيفور ذا امبر. اه على الكرامه اللي يعطيها الاجتهاد يا اخي. Beloved, how wonderful the uh, uh, position that uh, uh, diligence gives. Uh, كنت عايز اكمل 23 و 24 نختم بقى باصحاح ممكن 31 كيف Let's look at first chapter 31. This is the last one. دي مين هي دي؟ Who is this one? The noble wife or the noble woman. Ah, no, no, I was going to read the book, but I was going to say something. Why is she a father? Why is she a noble woman? What is the thing that separates her in this particular work, in this particular part? The diligence. طب تعالى اقرا كنت مش مش مصدقني لو يو دونت بليف مي تصنع له خيرا عدد 12 شي برينجز هيم جود تطلب صوفا 
She selects swollen flax. And works with eager hands. She considers a field and buys it. She sets about her work vigorously, her arms are strong, her tasks. In her hands she holds the distaff. And grasps the spindle with her fingers. It's all work. It's all work. She's, uh, she's diligent and she's uh, energetic. She, uh, she wakes up when it's still dark. You, you know about bees, you know bees, they work a lot. She's like a bee, she's working all the time. The noble woman is diligent. You know, because she is noble, because she is diligent, her husband is known. Her children lack nothing because she's diligent. You know, uh, the goods are even outside of the house because she's diligent. May the Lord give us grace, beloved. Diligence is good and it's a blessing. Laziness is something that God hates. Beloved, uh, 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 diligence is wealth and honor. And uh, 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 laziness is poverty and death. May the Lord give us that we, if we can do some, He'll give us more in all of the things of God. Can I remind you of the thing that the, uh, the verse that we remember from the beginning? Uh, do you remember it? What God of heaven has commanded. Let it be done with diligence. May the Lord honor us.